Good morning, I'm Maria Noel Leoni, I'm the director of the GQUAL campaign, an initiative that since 2015 has been working to achieve gender parity in international justice, where women have often been absent or underrepresented. Today I have the privilege of welcoming and having a conversation with one person who has been very much involved in these international institutions and in the selection processes of the different individuals that are part of the institutions. Um, it's a pleasure to welcome Ambassador Federico Villegas, who is a human rights defender and a diplomat from Argentina. Ambassador uh, Villegas is currently the permanent representative of Argentina before the United Nations in Geneva, and for the past year has served as the president of the UN Human Rights Council. Welcome, Federico. It is a pleasure to have you here with us for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Ambassador Villegas, uh, as you well know, at the Chiquel campaign we have worked intensely to consolidate gender parity, geographical balance and representation in the special procedures of the Human Rights Council, which we see as some of the main mechanisms created by the Council to protect and promote human rights. When we started the campaign in 2015, women occupied little more than 38% of these positions. And this included several mandates that have had an overwhelming female representation because of the issues they cover, including women's rights, duties of care, and so on. At least 19 of the special procedures had never been held by a woman, by a woman back then. This lack of adequate representation affects the legitimacy and the impact of these important mechanisms. However, women's representation has significantly increased in the past year. Today, out of 80 available positions at the special procedures, approximately 40, 50% are occupied by women. And while progress has been happening for some times, this year marked an important step forward, and a great part of that had to do with how you implemented your powers as president to propose candidates to the Human Rights Council. So far in your tenure, you nominated candidates to 23 positions and nominated women in 16 of them, which is around 70%. Could you tell us more about what inspired you to lead these efforts to promote, to, to promote and sustain gender parity and representation in the special procedures? Well, indeed, the, there are several um, reasons why I decided to do something different to increase women's participation in the special procedures in the Council. On one hand, we always have to think that half of humanity are women. Therefore, if a universal system has to address to the challenges of human rights all over the world, which is the basic role of the Human Rights Council, it wouldn't be reasonable to have specific mechanisms to address all types of human rights challenges that do not take into account a parity in the participation of those experts on women's, uh, women's issues. So that's the demographic reason. But also there is a matter of the human uh, rights perspective of women. Uh, you know, all human beings have some specific uh, contribution that can be done, can, be, can he or she give on human rights development. But some specific mandates uh, do need the women's perspective because, for example, in the case of torture, when I decided not to accept the proposal of the first in the list, which was an extraordinary expert, but a man, again, it will have been the seventh man to have the, that position, I decided not only on the uh, basic qualities and expertise of the a woman candidate, which was the second in the list, is also because on the prevention of torture, we know how many women are on detention. The women's issues in relation to torture uh, is something absolutely essential to have the, the woman's perspective on, on, on a, such an important mandate, which is one of the most important mandates of of the council. So my inspiration was one, the demographics, which gives us an obligation of accountability before half of humanity. And the second is the need to have not only a gender parity at large of all the mechanisms, but within each mechanism, like in this case, and uh, the same with, uh, with other mechanisms, 
and that, that is why I decided to do. And as you say, out of the 23 that I appointed, 70% have been women this year. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. And uh, as you mentioned, um, to achieve gender parity in the special procedures, it was key to make very particular decisions, to consider gender violence and to consider gender um, geographical violence as part of the criteria to appoint the different mandate holders. Um, how do you think these efforts can be maintained? And what do you think the Human Rights Council should do in order to institutionalize these measures as part of the selection procedures? Because so far, uh, they are not necessarily part, uh, a mandatory part of the selection processes. Well, I think that the GQAL campaign has been so successful recently in the OAS, for example, with the resolution, uh, that we have to think and explore the possibility of having some type of decision in the Council to, to make this a reality that is crystallized as a policy in the future. For example, sometimes as president, I had to appoint also experts in panels on different issues. And sometimes it's obvious that you need gender parity in a panel to address any issue. More and more, we, this has become something that is almost an obligation. And recently I was uh, I'm ambassador to other organizations in Geneva, and it was very interesting how last week we were about to organize a panel on agriculture in the WTO, the trade organization, and the draft panel proposed by the secretariat was, which is, by the way, a woman, but the draft panel that was proposed by her staff were five men as the only experts to be speak in an in a event of a whole uh, day. So coming from the Human Rights Council, several ambassadors that we are in the Council, we already know in our DNA that that is wrong, that that's unacceptable. And we raised the issue to the WTO. I said mm -hmm. in, the, in, in 2022, you cannot present a draft a panel in an event with only five men as, as keynote speakers. So I think we need to crystallize and maybe a resolution is, is the possibility in the near future. Thank you. Um, as you. As you said, um, it's, it's not only important that we have achieved gender parity in the special procedures and that we know how to implement different measures to sustain it, but it's also important to bring different perspectives to the different mandates. And that means ensuring that women, but also men from different countries in the world, different backgrounds, different experiences can access these positions. So how do you think that we uh, can make sure that more women and individuals from underrepresented groups can apply, access, and be successful in these positions? Well, I think we need to expand and disseminate the mechanisms and the opportunities for different men and women from all over the world to apply to these positions. Nobody is born a UN expert. All, even the most prestigious UN experts of the world, at one point they were not UN experts. They were just people committed to human rights. And uh, at one point in their life, they enter this world of independent mechanisms. So the first thing is to use, I will, I will say, the social media. If you look, for example, the Human Rights Council, uh, uh, which is one of the uh, bodies of the whole UN system that has the highest presence in social media, is putting on a daily basis the positions that are there for people to apply. So one, one thing is, to make a joint effort for people to know and visit the webpage of the UN uh, periodically to see which are the positions. And also to remember that after each session of the Council, you start a process of appointing new independent mechanisms for the next session. Mm -hmm. So there, there is a fixed period, three times a year, of opening up positions on over 47 different issues uh, of human rights. So I would really like to see a wide diversity of, of people from all over the world 
to feel the ownership of the universal system applying for these positions. The, uh, the richest contribution that we can give next year with the 75 years of the universal declaration is to have in the next 75 years a wide picture of experts from all over the world, all the regions and all the countries, men and women contributing to the development of, of human rights all over the world. Thank you very much, Ambassador, for joining us today, for sharing uh, your reflections, but also for all the work that you've done to promote gender uh, parity in the special procedures. It's been a pleasure for the GQUAL campaign to work with you, and we hope to continue this collaboration moving forward. Thank you so much. Uh, Definitely. I'm a gender champion, so I will we continue know. working with you next year as Argentine Ambassador. Thank you so much. Thank you.